Good morning. Sunday morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Week in Stupid for the 26th of December 2020. I would like to be the first one to wish you a Merry Christmas, unless you live in the United Kingdom. In that case, I'll just wish you a Christmas rather than a merry one. Why is that? Well, I guess it's better if I just show you. I want to, uh, as I say, to, to ban Christmas, to, uh, to cancel it, uh, and I, I think that would be, frankly, inhuman. So, it's official, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is doing inhumane things. Uh, citation, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. I mean, he said it himself, right? Like, banning Christmas is inhumane, and then he goes and bans Christmas. Like, how would you call that? However, you can still celebrate Christmas. According to Business Insider, all you need is a private jet, because many other wealthy British people are fleeing the United Kingdom in order to avoid new lockdowns ahead of Christmas, while Londoners are trapped in their city. Now, for those of you who cannot afford a public jet, you might afford a time machine because uh, a lot of people from London have fled. Fled the capital ahead of the tier 4 restrictions, which is something, quote unquote, totally irresponsible. So it's not the government that's totally irresponsible for announcing this ahead of time and getting people in a panic. Uh, no, 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 no. See, it's never the government to blame. It's the people. The people are to blame. Always, all the time. It's the taxpayer. And I gotta say that I fully agree. The government must be a little bit bewildered. Because according to polls, 72% of the English people did back Prime Minister plan in order to prevent people from visiting Grandma this Christmas. So why are they fleeing now? It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, they're getting what they wanted. It must be such a beautiful country, this United Kingdom, where... The government actually cares about the people and actually gives them what they want. And now they're fleeing. So, no, no, no. They, they have to go back. They have to go back because the government spent a lot of money in order to try and keep them healthy. And they need to be sent back to London in order to enjoy what I would like to call a journalist Christmas. Now, you may be wondering, V, what is a journalist Christmas? What is that thing? Well, apparently, a lot of journalists are trying to raise the public morale by doing this thing that I like to call show and tell. So they're showing to the public how they have spent their last Christmas in opinion pieces such as this. Have yourself a lonely little Christmas. I have spent many a holiday by myself. And you know what? It can be absolutely thrilling. I fully agree. I think the people who fled London need to be sent back to London so they can have an absolutely thrilling, lonely little Christmas. Now, other journalists uh, who didn't have enough words to formulate an opinion piece did uh, share their thoughts on the Twitter. Yet another Christmas when I'm forced to self-gift myself a giant three-flavor tin of popcorn because no one sent me one because I have no friends and no one loves me. I love you, Helen. I love you. I appreciate that you're sharing this with the rest of the class. And you know what? In a way, I'm happy that now finally equality is becoming more and more tenable. Everyone is going to be equal, at least in London, by having a not so merry, but very lonely and yet thrilling Christmas. And... What do I recommend to people to do in a lonely Christmas? Why, read the Huffington Post, of course. Give them some clicks, because they work hard and tireless in order to bring you award-winning journalism, such as this. If a black man broke into your house, you wouldn't offer him cookies. Santa Claus is yet another example of white supremacy and the double standards of Christmas in America. Um, wow. I would not want to break it to Matthew Jacobs and tell him that Santa isn't real. Um, I mean, if the man believes, 
Okay, if the man believes that an actual Santa Claus is trespassing and invading people's homes and no one does anything about it, why, why would I want to break that narrative to him? Like, why would I want to tell him that, look, man, like Santa isn't real. If Santa was real, he would have been shot by now. If not in the United States, at least when traveling above the, some Middle Eastern countries that have theocratic dictatorships and they would shoot down Santa for being a filthy heretic, a heathen, like not converting. Though, to be honest, maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong and Santa is real. And I just didn't realize. Maybe I'm a naughty boy. And because Santa doesn't bring me presents, I think he doesn't exist. But if only we had Chaz. Like, Chaz would have told us if Santa is real or not. It would have been the perfect litmus test for Santa Claus. Like, if Santa manages to fly over Chaz and not get mugged, then that debunks Santa Claus. That shows that Santa is a real. There is no way that old man would be able to fly during the nighttime over the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone that's filled with communist LARPers and not get mugged. Maybe, you know, like, this is why Santa doesn't come to my house. Maybe he got mugged when he flew over the USSR. I mean, any place that has communists in it, it's a place where you shouldn't bring any private property. Private or personal, despite popular myth. But uh, I, I'm digressing. You know what? I'll, I'll leave it as that. I, I'll just say... Yes, Huffington Post, Matthew Jacobs, you are absolutely right. The existence of Santa Claus proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that America is a racist country. I, I, I concede. I concede, like, in, in front of such strong logic and arguments, who am I to raise any questions? Although, now that I think about it, I do have one question. So, according to Huffington Post, America is racist because Santa Claus exists. So, we established not only that there is racismus in the United States, but there is also a Santa. What about COVID? I mean, isn't Santa going to break quarantine? I mean, I know Greta Thunberg approves of Santa Claus. He can fly with a very low carbon footprint. He can transport goods all around the world while not polluting. So... Yeah, Mother Gaia and Greta Thunberg like Santa Claus, but uh, what about COVID? Because that's dangerous now. Like, I think he's a biological hazard. He can go from house to house, from door to door, spreading disease and pestilence. He's like a demonic entity sent by Papa Nurgle himself. He's like one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, bringing pestilence upon the world. So I need to ask the experts, like, are we safe this year from Santa Claus? And luckily, Dr. Fauci has answered to children everywhere whether or not it is safe to open their hearts towards Santa. Elmer's friend has a question about Santa Claus. Will Santa still be able to visit me in coronavirus this season? Well, I have to say I took care of that for you because I was worried that you'd all be upset. So what I did a little while ago, I took a trip up there to the North Pole. I went there and I vaccinated Santa Claus myself. I measured his level of immunity and he is good to go. Oh, well, I guess we're safe. All right, like Santa Claus got the Pfizer vaccine, so we're safe. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Just just a second. I'm, I'm now starting to realize that I remember something. Remember... Remember Dr. Fauci contradicting himself? Uh oh. Uh oh. Santa is to be exempt from this because Santa, of all the good qualities, has a lot of good innate immunity. Dr. Fauci, what do I make of this conflicting information? On November the 20th, you said that Santa is exempt from a vaccine because he's got good innate immunity. And a couple of days ago, you told me that you went to the North Pole to vaccinate him. And I have to ask why. Like if you already had the, the innate immunity, why did you give him the vaccine? Well, how, how do I process this information? Maybe Santa has become evil. That's how I need to process. Maybe Santa is now evil and his good innate immunity has been turned evil, and thus it is not effective, and this is why he got the vaccine. All right. Now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop bothering Dr. Fauci. I mean, he's got a nation to run, unlike people like myself. So 
I need, I need to leave him alone. Instead, let's focus on other things. Other things that can cheer us up. Now, the way I cheer myself up is probably not very ethical, but hey, if it works, it works. So I'm not encouraging you to copy my system, but the way I cheer myself up is to look at the misery and the misfortune of other people. And then I get to say to myself that no matter how bad things are, at least I'm not those people. So I look at the half part of the glass that is full. I'm like, well, you know, my life can't be that bad. I mean, look at those other people. You know, that's, that's what it's like to have a bad life. So, so it's not that I'm taking joy in their misery and suffering. It's just like I, I'm learning from it. I'm, I'm trying to be thankful for what I have. And today I realized that at least I'm not a journalist. All right, because in an open letter, this has been the toughest year of the career of journalists. All right, so I got this open letter that says, Dear 2020 journalist, you are stronger than you know. If I had told you in January you'd produce from home, track from your closet, master Zoom, and anchor from your living room this year, you would have laughed and then cried. But here you are, focusing on facts, seeking the truth, and more importantly, sharing those ad click stories. Wearing your masks, bathed in hand sanitizer, doing your job. A job that some people hate you for doing. They were loud in 2020, but you were stark. You were strong enough to battle the isolation, the fear, and the unknown. Strong enough to ask your soul-searching questions, not just in our interviews, but in our newsrooms. Strong enough to ask for help because we all needed it in 2020. If you are a journalist at the end of 2020, you are strong. Stay strong because what you do matters. 2020 proved that. Thank you and Merry Christmas. You have earned it. Now, this emotional letter has managed to greatly move me. It has managed to touch me. Now, I can't show you on a doll where it has touched me because it has touched me at an emotional level. I mean, I, I just cannot relate how difficult this must be. I mean, they not only managed to master Zoom, but they also had to use masks and hand sanitizers. Oh my God, I, I just... I, I can't relate to that. It is just bewildering. Now, I remember reading about brave journalists who are writing about the mafia risking to get assassinated, but that pales in comparison with what journalists had had to do in 2020 by going on Twitter and getting mean words from people. The, the strength required is astonishing. And Let's not forget that they are now the masters of Zoom. Uh, you guys remember this gentleman that had a Zoom call and while thinking that he is off the air, started touching himself. And that he had uh, a lot of journalists also defending him in various articles and saying that he is a pillar of the journalist community. And they formed ranks in order to defend him from the public stigma. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely see that uh, they are now masters of Zoom, uh, anchors from their living room, and writing articles in very difficult conditions while having to wear face masks and hand sanitizer. So, again, I, wa I want everyone to clap for the stunning and bravery that journalists have displayed in 2020. I mean, without them, we wouldn't be getting brave articles such as this from the Sunday Opinion, all the Republican rats comparing politicians with rats. Now, I know I've seen that before. I know I've seen that before. I just can't tell where exactly in human history we have seen the opposition being compared to vermin. I, I just, oh. And then you get like a National Democratic Party official suggests re-education for Trump supporters, how do you deprogram 75 billion people? Some, some murky territory here. 
Or my favorite from the Washington Post, Democracy Dies in Darkness. Denying the Holocaust threatens democracy. So does denying the election results. Oh, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, like CNN going with the Russia story that the Russians stole the elections and uh, the Russians mingled and interfered in the elections. Yeah, that's, that's like the Holocaust, man, according to the Washington Post. I mean, I, I would never dare question or challenge something that the Washington Post has stated because they're an authoritative source. So they have authority on the matter. So when Rachel Maddow went on CNN talking about the Russians meddling in the American election, do you know what she was doing? She was threatening democracy. That's what she was doing. Uh, all of the people, hashtag not my president. Wasn't that like trending on Twitter for many days in many months? Hashtag not my president. Yeah, all those people. Yikes. I don't know. I think the Washington Post might be onto something. Uh, where was I? Wings. <laughs> Wings says, horrible pirate captain. <laughs> no Chester. Wait a minute. No Chester. Horrible pirate captain. No Chester booty to speak of to inspire the crew. I beg your pardon. Oh, so you think you're a comedian, huh? Coming up into my stream and insulting me like this in such a way. Oh, but I... I gave you a super chat, though. Oh! So, all of a sudden, that makes it okay. So, if I showed up at your house, I handed you a $5 bill, and then I spit in your face, is that the same thing? Is that also okay, or would you be offended? I think you would be offended. <laughs> I'm kidding. Thank you, Wings! Thank you! My god, faith in humanity, absolutely lost. Uh, not, not necessarily because of that video. The faith in humanity has been lost before. Someone told me that they're really thankful for me for introducing them to the Hollow Life tubers. And now they're watching the girls and he is spending money on super chats on the girls rather than me. How do you think that makes me feel? Like it, it really makes me feel like I did harm to myself. Like, I, I actually just threw opportunities out of the window. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Hey, if I, if I can contribute in some way to make your life better, I don't mind. You know, even if it comes at a net detriment to my fundings. It's fine. It's fine. Let's, uh, let's talk about something else. Now I need to cheer myself up again. All I have ever wanted from yogurt is to know who the cows are. So you got like this yogurt company, which apparently names the cows and then puts them uh, on the bottle. And you get like Myrtle, Letty, Ruth, Irma, Fanny. How on earth can you name your cow Fanny? Isn't that like a slang in the United Kingdom for vagina? It's like clam. Huh? Then you get like Julia, Veronica, Padma, Lucy. How can you name your cow Padma? It's like, okay, whatever. But, uh, you know, we got, we got some progressive thinkers here. We got some brainstorms saying, notice how they named all the cows traditionally girl names. There is a deep connection between misogyny and consuming animals. Well... I mean, technically, you're not consuming the animal. You're consuming a secretion from the animal. But um, is this lady suggesting that she would like to try bull's milk? Because I wouldn't recommend. And I wouldn't recommend drinking Sam Smith's milk either. Now, you may ask, what, what are you talking about, B? What, what do you mean, Sam Smith's milk? Well, Sam Smith, a celebrity wants to be a mummy by the time they hit 35 in search for love. People do a lot of things out of love, don't they? Um, but I wouldn't drink his milk, though. Like, I, I would draw a line. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't swooned me over yet. I don't know if he's considering, but, but if he tries to flirt with me and he, he manages to seduce me, I'm just putting a heads up, disclaimer, wouldn't drink his milk. Thank you.
Yes, yes, yes. God love you, man. You, you're a one-horse pony. I tell you. Thank you. Thank you. I promise you, my Justice Department will be totally on its own making its judgments about how they should proceed. Thank you. Look, I know I'm a Romanian, and sometimes me no speaking English, because it's a second language that I learned. I also know a little bit of German. So, yeah, a, a bit of Russian. Not a lot, but a bit. So, sometimes I, I get the language confused. Like, can anyone tell me what does it mean, a one-horse pony? Hey, huh? It's, uh, that's interesting. But you know what? I, I don't care. Because nothing makes sense anymore. Like, for example, you have this gentleman here. Uh, saying that Nancy Pelosi, who described a $600 as a significant stimulus for working families, has a net worth of more than $100 million. And apparently the criticism to this statement is that his misogyny is showing. Yes, absolutely. You know, there, there is absolutely no reason for the plebs to criticize the ruling class. There, there is absolutely no reason for a citizen... To look at a Democrat, the party that is about compassion and sharing that wealth and redistributing that wealth and taking it to the 1% um, and criticizing them for it, unless they're a misogynist. That is the only possible explanation. Luckily, we have David Little, mind reader here, like is a the Charles Xavier. He's, he's probably got a school of mutants in his backyard training them to be better people. Uh, my God, I I'm very concerned about blue check marks. I am. I am very worried about them. I can't sleep at night. I think about their safety. Like, how are they going to function from now on? Because uh, Donald Trump, the U.S. president, is their moral compass. He's the beacon that guides their way. He's like the emperor's light in Warhammer 40K having the Astronomicon. Uh, basically, the way it works is that whatever Trump says or does, the blue check marks are going to do say the opposite. Right? He's like a compass pointing north. How can they chart the uncharted waters without a compass? Like, let me give you an example. Right? Squat, Scott Dworkin. Uh, look at the date. 22 December 2020. We should only elect people to Congress who know $600 ain't enough. Now... After Donald Trump vetoes the legislation that says, look, $600 isn't a lot, you have Scott Dworkin, you are a disgrace. You should be removed from office immediately for refusing to sign this bill. Literally one day later. Like, literally one day later. What? Just, like, look. Look. Korewa genjutsu this. Like, how is he going to formulate opinions and make up his mind without the help of the God Emperor? And this is just one example out of many. I mean, same publication, same guy. Trump can't do anything right. We do not need troops in Syria. Now, after the conversation happens and uh, Trump wants to pull away troops from Syria, Trump's surprise Syria pullout is a giant Christmas gift to our enemies. Now, seriously, it's like he is the moral compass for these people. Like, he tells them how to think. He dictates and they follow. So, without him, these people are going to be in disarray. There's going to be chaos. They won't know what to write. Because look what happens when just for a couple of seconds Trump doesn't say anything. You have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez saying, This is why Congress needs time to actually read this package before voting on it. Members of Congress have not read this bill. It is over 5,000 pages, arrived at 2 p.m. today, and we are told to expect a vote on it in two hours. This isn't governance, it's hostage taking. So she's basically saying, like, how can I supposed to make an opinion when you're giving me things to sign? And she votes yes on it. Like, she doesn't read it, but she votes yes on it anyway. Like, someone could have said, V has won the presidential elections in 2020. And AOC would have been, yes. Because <laughs> she didn't read it. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't blame her. I mean, if only Trump would have stood up and said he supports the bill, then she would have voted no on it. It's simple. Like, whatever Orange Man says, you do the opposite. My God. In four years, he just didn't realize this. Like, he really didn't figure it out. <laughs> uh, by the way, it's not just members who need to see the bill ahead of time. It's all of the people. The public needs to see the bills well enough to contact them. No, no, no. This, this is stupid. This is assuming that the public is allowed to think for themselves. No, no, no. It's, it's just like, 
whatever is in the media. You know what she wants to say is that the journalists should see the bill ahead of ta the public. What, the, what does she think this is like some sort of democracy where people get to speak freely? Because if that was the case, what do we need the press for? Why do I go to the BBC and The Guardian and CNN to get wisdom and morality if I could just think for myself? This, this is such a dangerous proposition that she is saying. Like imagine, you know, like the internet would have no more terms of service. Like you, you could actually post whatever you want if you trust the people with such power to actually read legislation and have some feedback on it. No, no, no. The only people that need to have feedback on legislation are the journalists, NGOs, you know, institutions. Institutions is what not the people. Ah, the people. They're just abuses. You need to just bypass them as often as possible. Yeah, you know who else bypasses the people? China. China bypasses the people. We should be more like China. Do you ever hear negative things about China in the press? Very rarely. Do you know why? Because it's a wonderful place. Beacon of humanity and progress. So, uh, what did China do recently? Why am I bringing it up? Well, it did a little bit of an oopsie. Now, if you're not following international politics, then I'll, I'll give you the download. Very few nations have blamed China officially for the pandemic. There have been some, but not a lot. One of them is Australia. So the Australian government like came out officially blamed China. And as a response, China said that if you're going to treat us like the enemy, then we will be the enemy. And imposed sanctions on Australia. Now, one of the sanctions that they imposed is to ban the import of coal. And despite Greta Thunberg's one desire, China is still uh, quite heavily operating on coal. And because of that, we now notice power outages hitting many cities in China, including what is aptly named as the economic engine, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and other names that I can't pronounce, have faced power outages as restrictions have been imposed due to the shortage of coal. In Hunan province, the local government has directed its power agencies to cut their electricity use and half of the province street lights will be turned off at a night to tackle the tightening power supply. The provincial capital of Shangsha, high-rise buildings can't keep their elevators operating. Workers have sometimes been forced to climb 20 floors to their offices. The Financial Times report quoted an executive at China Hudan Power one of the largest energy companies, saying that many local power plants depend on Australian coal due to its higher efficiency, and now they are having trouble finding alternatives. Chinese authorities have also blamed power restrictions on the particularly cold Chinese winter. Oh, I see. Uh, power demand has surged as millions of people have switched to energy-intensive heating to cope with the sub-zero temperatures. According to a report in Bloomberg, more than 60 vessels carrying Australian thermal coal were held up in Chinese waters because they weren't able to offload their cargo. Responding to the energy embargo, China's foreign ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian said that there have been cases where the imported coal didn't meet the country's environmental protection standard. Yes, 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 the environmental protection. Well, you know what? If it doesn't meet environmental protection, then the Chinese citizen will just have to deal with the cold. I mean, it's not like there's a pandemic anymore and people need healthy immune systems. No, because like I understand China is one of the only nations on earth that have managed to get the situation under control, right? So there, there's no more worry. Just put on an extra jacket like my grandmother did during communist times when we also had the winters with sub-zero temperatures and no heating in the house. You just put on... One, sometimes maybe two jackets, and that's that's how you sleep, that's how you walk in the house. Uh, as for the workers having to go 20 flights of stairs, well, you know, a little bit of exercise, a little bit of cardio gets the blood warmed up. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the citizens just uh, need to take the brunt of it, because Australia had the audacity to criticize the Chinese government, right? It's not the Chinese government that's going to stay in sub-zero winter, like, rest assured, they, they need the warmth in order to think and be able to um, pass 
accurate legislation for the betterment of the people, of course. It's, it's uh, how communism works. Coming to a western city, there are you. Which, by the way, is a good thing, because China is the only nation on earth that can save us from racism. The West is very racist, incredibly so. And uh, just so you can see, Seattle Public School tells teacher that the education system is guilty of spirit murder. Do you, do you understand this concept? Like, can you, can you wrap your mind around it? Like, the spirit of education has been murdered in the United States. Romania doesn't have a spirit of education now. Do you know why? Because there's only one. And it died in the United States. So uh, let, me, let me show you some of the things that uh, teachers have to talk about. We would like to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands and traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. Well, then get the fuck out of their lands! Just get the fuck out of it! Like, if you are not invited, why are you there? What is wrong with these people? Like, oh, I, I acknowledge that I will... Then get the fuck out! Imagine, no, just the audacity. Like, I, I just... I, no, seriously, I, I can't imagine. Like, if you have a person that would say, yeah, I acknowledge that I'm trespassing on property, like, then why the fuck are you there? Get out. You know, like, no, see, would it help you? Like, would it help you if I went into your house during the middle of the night, and I stay in your living room and I say, I acknowledge that I am in the ancestral home of my subscriber, and I am here without permission. I took it from him. Does that help you in any way if I say that? Or, or would you just call 911 and say, get, get the motherfucker out? He's confessing. Like, he, he would admit to the crime. Just like, get him out. So why are these people still in here? Can anyone explain? Help me the logic. Like help me, help me, help you, help me understand. Then I got, I got a little upset about that. You know the, the audacity of it all. Like, let's talk more action. Like fix the problem. Get off their land. I, uh, I don't want to talk about politics anymore. You know what? I, I'm going to go to sports. Like surely there's no politics in sports. Oh fuck me. Uh, Cleveland's baseball team plans to drop the name Indians. After 105 years. You know what? Don't know, don't care. I just wanted to read some sports. You're not giving me sports? Fine, I won't read it. I, I'm going to go to the cooking magazines. You know, there's no politics in cooking, right? Well, holy crap, there is. Um, the racists have removed Aunt Jemima from the bottle. Uh, now, they, they maintain the label. Like, everything is there. It's almost like they're trying to market this in China. Do you know that Disney does this? No, I'm serious. Like, look at their posters. Uh, sometimes they don't remove the black guy, but they just like miniaturize it so it doesn't offend, I guess, Chinese sensibilities. Uh, they did this with Black Panther, like if they can't remove it because it's the main actor, they just cover its face. And now it seems the same for Aunt Jemima. She's not there. Like, why? I'm like, just bring Aunt Jemima back. I'm like... Yeah, and, and by the way, this is despite the wishes of her family. <laughs> Apparently, like, uh,. There are still people that can trace her lineage to her, and they're like, no, leave her on the bottle. Like, just leave her on the bottle. Nope. Oh, well, too bad. So sad. You know, uh, but now, now I guess America is more progressive. Like, this, this is the side of progress, isn't it? Very progressive. Yeah, I see. Oh, I can't do this anymore. Uh, going to go alone and sulk in my lonely little Christmas. Let me know how you think. Tell me in the comment section. And uh, if you like this... What you can do for me, besides super chatting, of course. Of course. You know, I, I always like it. But uh, if you can't afford it, then just share the video. Because the YouTube algorithm isn't being very kind to me. So sharing it on the Twitter, or on the Parlor, or whatever you have a social media. If, if you like it, and you want to show it to other people, I'll be very much appreciative of that. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.